But what the devil did is he eventually came out with a quote unquote Protestant that was a uh, Bible, which, which was actually supposed to be a revision of the King James Version. But what they did is they snuck in the Alexandrian manuscripts and they came out with this one. This is an original revised version, 1881, the New Testament. I think the whole Bible came out in 1884, if I remember correctly, Old and New Testament. But this is an original. The two guys that worked on that introducing the Alexandrian text to the revision committee were Westcott and Hort. I hear a lot about those if you study this subject. But this is the one that came out. This was the first new version to get rid of the King James Bible. And after that, this one came out in England. After that, there came this one. Let's see if I can hold it right here. The American Standard Version, 1901. This one I think is a second edition, but the point is this is an American Standard Version of 1901. The first new version from the Alexandrian manuscripts on the American shore, which was supposed to be a Protestant Bible, and it wasn't Protestant, it's Roman Catholic. But I want to show you quickly some of these new versions, the earlier ones, okay? Okay, here I have the <clears throat> Dewey Reams Bible. You can see right there, uh, promoted by Pope Pius XII, the man who signed a concordant with Adolf Hitler and Mussolini and Franco in Spain. So there's your Dewey Reams. Here you have the revised version, 1881. And here is my American Standard Version. It's kind of hard to read these. They're pretty old. I don't know if, you know if that's going to show up. You just barely make it out. Okay. But I just want to show you a deceptive one here. This is a Protestant Roman Catholic New Testament. The Revised Standard Version is based on the Nestle's text. Okay? So they'll deceive you. They want you to think that this Catholic Bible here, and, you, and by the way, you'll actually see Revised Standard Versions and New Revised Standard Versions that, are, that have Catholic editions. And if you look up on the internet and, you, and uh, you know, go to a Roman Catholic website and ask what Bible versions they recommend, they will recommend the Revised Standard Version or the New Revised Standard Version. So it's a Catholic Bible. And the Confraternity, of course, is a newer edition of the Dewey Reams. But you see the deception. Protestant Roman Catholic New Testament. No, it's Roman Catholic, Roman Catholic New Testament. If they wanted a Protestant Roman Catholic New Testament, it should be King James Version and the Confraternity. But that's how they'll deceive you. But all of these new versions that have come out uh, line up with a lot of the readings in the, uh, the Nestle's text, and, and they all have these same places where they will attack uh, specific verses. This is an excellent track here by Terry Watkins. And um, zoom in here a little bit. I want you to be able to see these verses. And you can look these up in all these new versions. They will pervert them. Genesis 22, verse 8. Isaiah 14, verse 12. Matthew 20, 20. Matthew 26, 28. Mark 3, 29. Luke 4, 4. Okay, Luke 4, 8, Luke 16, 23, John 4, 24, John 14, 16, Acts 2, 47, Acts 4, 27, Acts 8, 37, usually is taken out um, of the Bibles, these new Bible versions, these Alexandrian ones. There's, here are the other verses which they will take out or put in uh, parentheses to make you think that they're not part of the, they shouldn't be part of the Bible. Acts chapter 17, verse 29, Acts 20, verse 22, Romans 6, 22, 1 Corinthians 1, 21, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, Colossians 1, 14, 1 Timothy 3, 16, 1 Timothy 6, 10, 2 Timothy 2, 15, Revelation 1, 5. Okay, here's the website address. 
Sorry I had to go through this track very quickly, but for sake of time I couldn't show everything in great detail. AV1611.org, you can get on there and get all this information and you can learn how to spot a counterfeit Bible. Okay, They're all the same, doesn't matter. All these new versions, they just keep coming out and trying to get their corrupted verses passed. But I want to show you some of the mentality of a lot of these new versions. This is the J.B. Phillips translation, and you can see that design on the cover of this thing. It's a P and an X. See it there? That is a symbol for Christ, according to Rome, basically. Um, but you can see, as in this picture here, a Catholic priest with the symbol on his uh, robes. Basically, what they're trying to say is... They are Christ. They are another Christ. And that is a teaching, an official teaching of Roman Catholicism, that the priest is a, another Christ, as you see here. Pretty blasphemous. But uh, I want to show you here in the back some of the writings of this guy, J.B. Phillips. Here he writes that uh, he felt bound to conclude from the sense of the next three verses that we have here either a slip of the pen on the part of Paul <laughs> or, more, or more probably a copyist error. See, that's not written by somebody who has reverence for the Word of God. That's written by a Bible perverter, a Bible corrector. He comes across something that he doesn't like and he says, well, obviously Paul probably made a mistake here or, you know, somebody copied it wrong. See, that's, that's the mentality of these people that come out with these new versions. But now, next, we're going to listen to something very, very interesting. This is a CD set from Radio Liberty. Excuse me. And we have here, Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan attended a medical meeting on March 20th, 1969. Let me zoom into that a little bit. The speaker was Dr. Richard Day, who told the audience to turn off their recorders and not take notes because he was going to tell them what was going to happen. Some of you were talking about communism. Well, what I'm talking about is much bigger than communism. Dr. Dunnigan re realized the message was important, so he tried to remember what was said and made notes later. This is one of the most important CD sets ever recorded. Now, this is a very, very interesting uh, set of recordings made by this man. There, there is a group of very rich, very powerful men which are designing the Antichrist One World Kingdom, the One World Government, the One World Religion. And this man, Dr. Richard Day, who later became, <coughs> excuse me, became the head of Planned Parenthood, he told this group of medical doctors what they were doing to bring about this new order. Okay, so let's listen to this. Another area of discussion was religion. Uh, this is a, an avowed atheist speaking. Uh, and he said, religion is not necessarily bad. A lot of people seem to need religion with its mysteries and rituals, so they will have religion. But the major re religions of today have to be changed because they are not compatible with the changes to come. The old religions will have to go, especially Christianity and a new religion can be accepted for use all over the world. It will incorporate something from all of the old ones to make it more easy for people to accept it and feel at home in it. Most people won't be too concerned with religion. They will realize that they don't need it. In order to do this, the Bible will be changed. It will be rewritten to fit the new religion. Gradually, key words will be replaced with with new words having various shades of meaning. Then the meaning attached to the new word uh, can be close to the old word, and as time goes on, other shades of meaning of that word can be emphasized, and then gradually that word replaced with another word. Um, I don't know if I'm making that clear, but the idea is that uh, everything in Scripture need not be rewritten, just key words replaced by other words, and uh, the variability in meaning attached to any word can be uh, 
used as a uh, tool to change the entire meaning of scripture and therefore make it acceptable to this uh, new religion. Most people won't know the difference, and this is another one of the times where he said, the few who do notice the difference won't be enough to matter. Then followed one of the most surprising statements of the whole presentation. He said, some of you probably think the churches won't stand for this. And he went on to say, the churches will help us. There was no elaboration on this. Uh, it was unclear just uh, what he had in mind when he said the churches will help us. 